December 2nd. A couple of quick images from Lasco C2 today. Still getting a lot of solar activity. Notice that blast out the top and the right, and iSun has left the, from the top. Now, these images of iSun before perihelium are giving us a look at the debris trail, kind of looking at it closer and see what we can see. And you can see there's some particles in it. But the, that tail that we just saw happened after the x flare Look, by, on Halloween, iSun had already crossed the Earth's orbit and had crossed Mercury's orbit before the flare on the 19th. And this that's the location when the flare hit it. So we had the wider tails, 250,000 kilometers wide, about four times wider than what we see here. Plus, a lot of stuff got blown back in, on the 19th into the orbit of Mer uh, Mercury and Earth, guys. Now, this is some of the last images as I suddenly left the CRO2. Now, these are side views from SETI A, so we get a pretty good look at it. I'm just going to step it through and enlarge it and give you some enhancements. Here, notice that wave. That's a solar flare that has hit iSun. And it was almost like it was trying to hold together at that point. And you see as that solar flare come across it, seems to shatter it. Now, I've got some close-ups of this last image uh, as it's departing, just in different filters and all, trying to get it down to knock as much glare out and to be able to increase it. You're starting to pixelate out here, guys. They kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at from the side. Now, it's going to be coming over us, and we're not going to be seeing this view. Again, this is Sechi A on the other side of the sun. But there appears to be objects tumbling. This is getting wider. Now, it is in an upward arc if it follows the original projection. It's not coming straight at Earth. It's rising each day until December 28th. But now, you've got to think of this as a V. If that point of the V is over us on the 28th, then the deep debris trail will be delayed a few days as it widens and spread. But spreads, guys. But I think that it's very highly possible we could see some fallout, maybe simply fireballs. Don't know yet. We're going to be watching it. But notice it has left the uh, ACRO2. Now it's on AHI1. What's happened here? That's not Iceland. That was the solar flare that blew across it. And what I think has uh, made it start to disintegrate even further. Now, but what now? Watch Iceland come in. Now, this kind of amazed me to see this come in on this camera instead of like balls of an asteroid. We're still getting this V signature. And again, remember, guys, in this image, Earth is twice as far away from the camera as I sun. Now, they're going to cross. I sun will be above the Earth on the 28th if it hangs in there with this projected pattern. But that fantail is spreading down. So if the point of this crosses Earth's orbit or a height 41 million miles above it, on the 28th, it would be few, a few days behind that, guys, because of that trailing angle. Again, Earth will be moving to the right. Now, what this reminds me of in the Bible is Job. God is talking to Job, and he says, Has thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? What war are we talking about, guys? And how is this hail delivered? Now, it goes, and, uh, goes to Revelation 8, and Pastor Paul talks about this a lot, but it's talking about the smoke of the incense which came from the prayers of the saints ascended up before the God, before God and out of the angel's hand, and the angel took the center and filled it with the fire of, altar, of the altar and cast it into the earth. There were voices and thunders. Now, guys, who was that angel? That may be very important. You understand what I'm saying? What angel would that be? We need to know this. And has there been hints throughout the Bible of who it would be and what personality we're dealing with and what are his announcements throughout history? I think it's Gabriel. He appears four times in the Bible. Back, he appeared to Daniel. He explained to Daniel the Antichrist and the war at the end time, and we're looking at the peace treaties trying to be signed in Israel as, as we speak. Now, Gabriel was also in some of the lost books. Guys, in the Apocrypha, I have had a copy for 30 years of it. It's a great book. Many Christians 
I would not have considered before we built a Brooklyn Bridge to read the Bible without this. It was part of it. It was in between the Old and New Testament and the religious people that ran Britain and the churches here decided to take it out. But Gabriel, you can read the meaning there. That's the power of God. And now listen, here's the key to that angel and that incense at that altar. Who? Where was Gabriel in Luke 1? He was standing at the right side of the altar of the incense when he was speaking to Zacharias. And he told, what did he talk about he talked about he talked about John coming first six months early then he went to Mary and told him about the Messiah coming and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus how important was Gabriel guys how important and back here guys in Enoch, pause any of this and you read it. He's the one that God sent down at the flood to destroy the fallen angels and the mixed breeds and the watchers. You understand what I'm saying? The fallen angels. Gabriel destroyed the wicked during the flood. Look, check this out. He explained the end time prophecy to Daniel, announced the conception of the Messiah. And I think that's him standing there. He is considered in a lot of the Orthodox religions to be the commander of and God's general in heaven. And that's why I think it's important to research and find out why did he say to Zechariah, why was it important that he was standing by that altar of incense? It was to, for us to study, prove ourselves approved, guys. Be safe, heads up.